cost concepts and cost allocation in managerial accounting. We've been talking about how we live under normal costing. In other words, where our, over, our, our overhead has a debit side, which is actual, and our credit side, which is applied, and then at the end of the period, we reconcile the over or under applied overhead. So work in process, remember, has actual materials, actual labor, and applied overhead. Finished goods during the period has actual materials, actual labor, and applied overhead. Cost of goods sold during the period has actual materials, actual labor, and applied overhead until the end of the period. So what I want to talk about now is the four steps to success with overhead. In other words, if I'm under normal costing, what do you have to do every period as a manager? Well, step one is to plan the rate. And to plan the rate, you take estimated or budgeted overhead and you divide that by an estimated cost driver. Now you're saying, well, what's a cost driver? A cost driver is a statistic that has a causal effect. So, for example, if I said to you, um, do you think that overhead costs will go up the more units you produce? You would say, yeah, that makes sense. Well, units produced then would be a cost driver. Another type of cost driver that you'll see a lot is either um, direct labor um, costs or direct labor hours. In other words, the more hours that the guys work on products, the more your overhead costs are going to be. So many times cost drivers are like direct labor um, hours, direct labor dollars. In other words, the more you spend on labor, the more your overhead costs are going to be. Or the other one is machine hours. The more time that your machines are on in, in the production process, the more your overhead costs are going to be. So these are common cost drivers. So estimated budgeted overhead divided by an estimated cost driver will give you a rate. And that rate is at the beginning of the period before you start doing anything. And a rate might be something like uh, overhead is going to be one dollar for every two dollars of labor. So notice that overhead is a dollar for every two dollars of labor. So if labor costs you two dollars, how much overhead will get applied? A dollar. The second thing you do during the period is you apply the rate. So say you work um, 200 labor hours, or labor, or you spent $200 on labor. That's how I should say it, isn't it? If I work $200 on labor, then how much overhead will be applied? In other words, how much will I debit work in process and credit overhead for? Well, I will apply overhead of $100, won't I? So I'll debit WIP and credit O for $100 because we had $200 of labor costs. That's my best estimate. So remember, when we apply the rate, it's an estimate. The third thing we're going to do during the period is to record the actual overhead. So as those overhead bills come in, we're going to be debiting overhead and crediting accounts payable, accumulated depreciation, um, salaries and wages payable, whatever it is uh, for those indirect costs to the product. Finally, at the end of the period is when we reconcile that overhead account. And remember, we've got actual, if I can spell, which was step three on the debit side we have how much we apply, which is step two in these steps, and we're going to end up with a balance that's either a debit balance or a credit balance. Oh my, if it's a debit balance, that means we what? Under applied, and if it's a credit balance, that means we over applied. And do you remember the entry to close it? You're right, 
if we're under applied, we're going to debit cost of goods sold and credit overhead. And if we're over applied, we're going to debit overhead and credit cost of goods sold for the difference. And why did we reconcile? So that the financial statements would show the actual cost of goods sold.